morning to you all. This is an annual tradition for Galaxy International School. Science is problem solving. So if we're here today, then that means that we are concerned about the world. This is the 15th edition of Galaxy International's Science Fair. And the theme for this 15th annual Science and Makers Fair is Imagine, Event and Inspire. So if we're here, then it means that we've done wonderful projects, we've carried out experiments that are going to bring solutions to the problems that we face in the world. I'll call on the principal of the secondary school, Mr. Jaffer Tepeli, to give us his opening speech. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Good morning. Guest speakers, special guest of honor, invited guests, parents, staff of Galaxy International School, all protocols observed, ladies and gentlemen. It is with much pleasure that I stand here on, the, on this great day to welcome all of you to our school and also this year Science and Makers Fair. It gives us a great sense of joy to organize the Science and the Makers Fair every year in our school, inviting students and the teachers from neighboring schools to participate in our program. This has always provided platform for us to bond a healthy socio-cultural environment. This year, like all other years, is an, another exhibition by creative and scientific minds in our school aimed at bringing people with a common interest together under the same roof. The fair is an important occasion for us, for our students to share ideas and exchange thoughts. It also offers students a precious opportunity to showcase their achievements which can inspire them further their pursuit of scientific knowledge. At this junction, I would like to express my profound appreciation to the students and my teachers who have worked tirelessly to make this event convenient. Science plays an overwhelming importance in our life. Scientists have been looking for ways to make this world a better place for all of us and improve productivity. Through creative models such as the ones our students have been displayed, I wish you all the best in your adventure in our this year's science and making sphere. Thank you for all for being patient listeners. Thank you. We will all attest the fact that education is not just to read and write, but then it is about problem solving and holistic development. The approach to holistic development is a pragmatic approach. And the minds of students work faster than a jet plane. You will have amazing students out here and their minds work faster than a jet plane. That means that the curiosity level and enthusiasm in children is high. They want to know why, why, why. And that is what science intends to do. And we can only solve these problems through scientific approach. So then, it is the responsibility of the parent, of the teacher, to nurture and to guide that enthusiasm that are in these young, lovely ones. And that, we have a special person here in our midst. He is the former Director General of the Ghana Education Service. And he is now the Chairman of the Ghana Education Service Council. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Michael Ensua with a round of applause. The Managing Director of Galaxy Schools, the Principal of Galaxy International School, Directors of Education and officials from other schools. I am particularly delighted to be here this morning because I am part of Galaxy. Today marks the 15th time that this uh, institution is mounting science exhibition. Many countries, in fact, any country that wants to develop must put science at the core of its education. When Ghana achieved independence, the country saw the need to promote science 
and therefore a whole university was established purposely for science. When you come to the secondary level, every effort is being made to get more science students than our students. But again, we have students doing other courses more than the doing science. I think Galaxy is playing a very major role in trying to create interest in the teaching of science and also create interest in students for them to discover something that can help this nation grow. And if we'll be able to do that, then we need science. And we need students or children who are particularly interested in finding out what can be done to any of the products that we grow in this country. Whatever we produce can be converted and preserved for use later in the year. I find the science fair that has been organized in Galaxy very interesting because each year many children from other schools come and join us. If you start asking questions, you'll be able to provide solutions that will be for the interests of the community and the nation as a whole. On this note, I declare the 15th Science Fair by Galaxy International School duly open. Thank you. And when I was young, there was this saying, the sun rises from the east and sets in the west. So all along, I thought the sun actually moved. But now, because of science, because of people like Stephen Hawkins, we've come to know that the sun actually doesn't move. And the sun is actually a star. We left it one last person. So let's welcome Madam Kate Ajay. The chairperson for the National Teaching Council, the management of Galaxy, the principal, directors present, all protocol observed. I stand here on behalf of the director of Atenta Municipal Education to join you in celebrating this grand occasion. But science fairs are very, very important when it comes to education. The area I like most is when I see students, pupils, putting what they have learned into practice. And what we are going to observe shows whatever you are doing in the school. So we praise the school for organizing science fairs every year, showing the projects that children have developed over the year, so that whatever they do, others will learn, develop in their school. It is very, very important that the project that we develop we do not leave them in the classrooms or in our schools. There is the need for us to showcase whatever we are developing for other stakeholders to come in and help us to develop it to solve problems in our community. And so it is our hope that Science Fest will continue to be a medium to accelerate the match to development in science, maths, and education in our society. I thank you all for listening. Galaxy International School Secondary had a photo contest. Out of 20 participants, the first three for the photo contest were in third position, we have Elikem Elias Ifiani, if she's here. 150 Ghana cities for early care. In second position, we have Arnold Adam Agurusu. He is going home with 300 Ghana cities. And in first position, Mehmet Yauza Baji. We call Mr. Yusuf Tamiskan to present his certificate. Yes, 500 Ghana cities. 500. Ladies and gentlemen, the stands are now open for us to listen. Thank you. Hello, 
my name is Pat Smaller. My name is Sandra. And our project is about hydrogen gas. When, when, when metal, aluminum, contacts with hydrochloric acid, hydrogen gas is produced. Okay. This is hydrochloric acid. Now reaction is starting. Hello, my name is Michelle Seng, and this is my colleague Sarah Sakina Hamidou. Today we'll be demonstrating an experiment known as disappearing water. The materials needed are sodium polyacrylate, which is extracted from baby diapers, water, a spatula, some beakers, a pipette, food coloring, and some gloves. Sodium polyacrylate, which is extracted from baby diapers, absorbs water 100 to 1,000 times its actual weight. It is made from sodium oxide and polyacrylic acid. So sodium polyacrylate is used in diapers, and it's also used by the movie industry to produce fake shoes. Most I most watch movies and you see them producing fake shoes. And also, it's used in shoes. It's used in shoes. Most of the times, you buy a shoe and you see a fighting substance in it. The purpose is to absorb any moisture that the shoe absorbs and maintain its shape. The U.S. Department for Agriculture has approved the use of sodium polyacrylate for the production of vegetables. And also, it is used in the shoes of astronauts with other absorbents to prevent them from developing rashes when they go into space. Also, it's used uh, it's used to coat wires, sensitive wires, to prevent moisture from getting to them. Since moisture air, water acts, reacts with electric, electricity. So I'm about to demonstrate. So I'm about to demonstrate how they can use this to produce electricity. So, Realize that the sodium polyacrylate have absorbed the water. It can absorb up to 100 to 1,000 times its size. Sodium polyacrylate can serve for the fish, the fish is the water. So by the use of um, a food, food coloring, Sodium polyacrylate have absorbed all the water I call it. And you can make this reference to your room to serve the food, to serve as a decorating purpose. Good morning. My name is Kelly Modi. And, and today we are doing chemical fire. Now, chemical fire is a little different from a normal fire. For a normal fire to start, you need oxygen, fuel, and heat. But for chemical fire, you don't need some of these things. The, now, the materials for chemical fire are acetone, potassium permanganate, concentrated sulfuric acid, copper nitrate, and copper chloride. Now, for the experimental procedure, first take your cutting and soak it in acetone for about 30 seconds or less. Then you place it on a ceramic board over here. Then afterwards, you add a few sprinkles of potassium permanganate. This one. You sprinkle it around your cutting room. Then you add your sulfuric acid to it as a catalyst to speed up the reaction. Some of the applications of this. This fire can normally be used in companies or maybe industries. To burn things, to boil things for a few periods of time. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Salma Adam. And my name is Kelvin And we are doing explosives. We have gunpowder and we have natural cellulose cotton. So for the gunpowder, we are using coconut shells 
which we burn to get charcoal for the gunpowder. And we use sulfur, we use potassium nitrate, which is also known as kiln. Yeah, potassium that's salt heater. So we added these things and make them with ethanol to enhance the burning. So that's how we got, we burnt it, we burnt it, we pounded it, we grinded it, we did everything and we came out with our gunpowder. So I'll try this. And this should not be tried at home, not at all. And that also caused a really big explosion. In addition to our project, we also decided to explore the explosive nature of nitrocellulose. Nitrocellulose is simply a nitrated cotton. It's not the normal cotton at all. So we are going to try the nitrocellulose and then the normal, normal cotton. cotton. Then we see the impact. So you see how slow this is burning, how fast it's burning? It's burning very fast. The reason is the nitric acid we added. The sulfuric acid is just a catalyst to speed up the reaction. Uh, my name is Victoria. Okay. So this is a siphon and the tube from here brings the water in and one of the tubes also makes the water leave. <clears throat> so one tube here brings the water in and the one tube here makes it clean. This is the valley system. It's like the generator. Kinetic energy from here powers this and causes the flow of electricity. When we roll it this way, it works because the lead works in one direction, but when we roll it this way, it doesn't work. And these two devices here, this is the voltmeter, which measures the voltage, and this is the ammeter, which measures the current. My name is Hikmat. My name is Nadia. Ghana has been depending on the Akuzumbo Dam for electricity. So now they're interested of the nuclear power. And it's better cooling chambers, nuclear reactors, a boiler, turbines, and a generator. Condenser. First, the nuclear reactor will break the atoms that comes to the boiler. The boiler will boil the water. There are two ways that comes to the steam. One way comes to the condenser, the other way comes to the turbine. The, the, the steam will power the turbine, the turbine will power the generator. That gives us our electricity. And the other way is that it comes to the condenser back to the cooling chamber, from the cooling chamber to the condenser again, to back to the boiler and continue. Mm. The disadvantage is that it can give you any skin diseases, and then, and then, the, especially the nuclear the nuclear reactor. In 1999, the nuclear reactor exploded the place, exposed the surroundings, and killed many people. My name is Kevin Chawi. The, today we are going to talk about earthquakes. Earth, the, earthquakes happen when the earth tectonic plates hit each other. There are three types, the mild, the severe, and the tsunami. The mild ones occur when the earth tectonic plates completely rub against each other. The severe ones occur when the earth tectonic plates crash. And there are other possible effects. Tsunami is the earthquake that happens under the sea. On the earth field, the houses closer to the epicenter will collapse before the houses further away. So this were the houses closer. So they fell before the houses fell away. We are told not to build around the epicenter, but to build around the prone areas. Thank you. Hello, my name is Rabia, and this is called a Rubik's Cube. It is spread around the world. Yeah. There are many types of puzzles like this. For example, this is called this cube. It turns like this. This is a twisty cube. It, it can change its shape. This is a 4x4. Four four. It has four layers. This is a mirror block. It also changes its shape. This is a mega mix. It has 12 sides and 12 different colors. Now I'm gonna solve one of them and show it to you. So the 
this is how I solve it. First, on the white side, I make a cross here. Then, when I'm done with it, I solve the first layer by an algorithm. Then I solve the second layer by some also spe special formula. Then, when, when I'm done, I go to the last layer and I solve a cross on top here and I and I fix the corner pieces and I get it solved. Hello, my name is Edward and I'm going to teach you how to charge your phone with a mini power bank. Now, now you put the key in the in this hole and you stick it to this side, it is charging your phone, but it can charge from up to 5 to 10% of your phone according to the battery, the power of your battery. And you can get this in any car and you need a normal key to do the experiments. So your phone will be charged. My name is Ashraf Kosama and today we are going to be talking about groundwater and surface water pollution. About 71% of the earth is covered with water and the human body is made up of 70% of water. So water is very important for humans. Uh, the full tank is, an, is underground. When they are cracks, it will leak out and it will pollute the groundwater and then same for the septic tank and then when they are pumping out the water through the well, uh, it will, the fuel and the wa human waste will also come and when humans use this water, they will fall sick and die. Illegal mining uses poisonous chemicals to extract precious metals such as gold. When they drink this water, they get diseases such as skin and liver diseases. Refuse them closer to water bodies pollute the water and destroys the water life. It dissolves poisonous chemicals into the groundwater and when and animals and humans cannot drink this water. When they drink this water, they get diseases and when they bathe this water, they get skin diseases. My name is Mohamed Osama. This is our robot that we use for the FLL 2019-2018. So when you program it and you start the program, the robot will move around and then do the missions. In the program, the, the main engines are engine B and engine C. They are the ones that move the robot. They also control the robot, make the robot turn. And then we also have engines for attachments. We also have the brick. The brick is like the robot itself. It is the one that you program and then it controls all the other parts of the robot. But the brick controls the engines, the attachments and also the senses, like the human senses. They help the robot see and then feel what is around it.
I'm Matilda and an APR for Informa Ata. Checks and balances and a separation of powers. It's a tool given to the various organs of government, that's the judiciary, the executive and the legislature, to monitor each other so that they do not become too powerful to control. The legislature can check the executive. And then by what means? When, this, when the legislature draws the, the national budget, it needs the approval of the legislature. Also, the executive can check the legislature. When the legislature make laws, before they become laws, they are first called bills. And then those bills first need the assent, that's the signature of the president, who is also a member of the executive, before they can become laws in the judiciary. They also have a special weapon called the judicial review. They use this review to declare the actions of the legislature and the executive null and void. That's if they are not in conformity with the parent act, that's the constitution, separation of powers. It's a practice in which the various organs of government are made independent in terms of personnel and functions. The legislature, their basic function is to make laws for the state. The executive, their basic responsibility is to formulate and implement policies used in the state. To the judiciary, their basic function is to interpret laws and adjudicate disputes, that settle disputes among people. Yes. So their personnel, our go to the legislature, is made up of the speaker, the majority and the minority, then the 275 members of parliament. Coming to the executive, we have the president, the vice president, and the cabinet ministers. We go on to the judiciary, we have the chief justice and other Supreme Court judges. I'm Ken Sapo. And I'm Amode and I'm This is basically about our sector of production, that is chain of production. So we have here the primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. The primary sector talks about like um, people extracting raw materials from the land. That's started as a farm and it comes to the industry for processing. After processing it gets to the um, tertiary um, sector for them to give services to the to the um, customers. After the services are being put out, you can send these papers back to the for the farmer to take, take records of activities that go on on the farm. So they all depend on each other. Yeah, so that's basically about the origin of production. And this year we have the seas, mineral resources. They get um, mineral resources from, from the sea and it's put in the industry for processing. And these are service providers, which are schools, um, banks, banks, schools and hospitals. and I'm doing an artwork of a waterfall. I'm, I'm doing the leaves of the trees, so I have to mix red and yellow to make the color of the leaves. The choice of colors matches well with the atmosphere, and this atmosphere represents autumn time. So this, um, the trees and everything matches with the surroundings, which is a waterfall. These paintings can be posted in offices, around town, in schools, classrooms. I'm not done, but this is what I've done. Please, my name is David Apia. My name is Salma Gabonada. And we are here at the Art and Craft Stand. So what we did, we used beads to make necklaces over here. And we used fabrics and other stuff to make the rosettes over here. Rosettes are like you can brush this or you can put them on your head. And then we used pom-poms and fabric to make this mat. You take a glue gun and put hot glue, hot glue on the mat fabric to make the mat. And these were made by yarns. And these are beads and they are bracelets made by beads. And these are calabashes. You can use them to decorate your pot or any part of your room. For example, like this, you can put your flowers inside. And this is eggshell mosaic. You use eggshell to make an image of a butterfly. So what you do is that you use paper mache to make the body of the butterfly. And then you use a white glue to put the eggshells on the straw board. And then after that, you paint it. 
and we have different artwork made by different students of Galaxy International School. This one in particular was made by her. By her. I did leather earrings. First, we cut, we used a circular object to form the round shape we have here. Then use carpenter's glue to fix the two together when they dry. And then use a punching tool to, and a wooden mallet to make holes inside. After that, you tang it. When you tang it, you take, you cut leather in a rope form. And then you go through it in and out like you are sewing, but on leather. At the end, then you add the hook and you got the earring. Art is life. My name is Rafa Zakaria. So we are doing resin art and we use these chemicals. This is a resin and this is a hardener. And we use this colors as well, they are called micas. And this is a hair dryer. We needed to spread the items when we make them. So first we get a support and our support here is a wooden support. Then after we get the wooden support, we painted it with acrylic paint. So we, after painting the wood with acrylics, we mix this in equal proportions. We used one of this and two of these, and we mix them. Then we added the colors to them. So after we pour them on the surface, then we used the hair dryer to spread it. So when we use the hair dryer, it spread it to various places. And this is a tree bark. This is a tree bark. So after we have to put it down for a day for it to dry up. But after when we are after mixing this. Within 30 minutes, we have to be done with everything. Otherwise, it will get hard and we can't work on it again. So it's a similar thing we've done here. This is an island. It's a portrait of an island. And this is something we did for our school. And my name is Sylvestina. Our project is origami. Origami is the process of folding papers to make items. The word origami is originally from Japan. The word ori means to fold, and gami means paper. This one is we made use strawberry, cardboard, paint, ribbons, paint. This one is a flower vase. We use a newspaper, paint, strawberry ribbons and some pearls. We folded the newspaper into this shape, we painted it, and then we used a bottle. We placed a newspaper around the bottle and then we folded it to make the shape inside. Then we placed the ribbons around it, we painted it, then we placed it. We made out of just paper and, and strawberry and, strawberry and glue. Yeah, and glue. Glue gun. You make like so many of them. Yeah, I have to make so many of them. It's made out of yarn. Yes. This one is made of spoons. Blue and mirror. And spray gun. Welcome to our stand. My name is Nanaja. And I'm Anna Bolsena. Uh, our stand. Here in our project today, we are talking about aquariums. An aquarium is a glass or plastic transparent tank which co contains uh, aquatic plants or animals. Here we have uh, fishes and then fishes. There are different types of fishes in our, in our tank right now. There are the, the brown one here is called a common molly, which has a lifespan of three to five years. Please help me. And then the multicolored fishes over here are called Japanese koi. As you can see, there is a little pink fish at the bottom. The little pink fish is called uh, goldfish. But this goldfish is still a little child, so it hasn't grown up yet. When it grows, as it grows bigger and bigger, and it advances in years, it will turn into an orangish gold color, as you see in most in this picture over here. These okay. fishes feed on dragonflies, fly larva, water beetles, small fishes, seeds, aquatic plants and algae. Here is their fish food, which is a mixture of water beetles, dragonfly, aquatic plants and algae. 
When fishes are fed, they usually come to the surface, but, you sh but these fishes over here run away when they are being fed because they think we are going to catch them. Continue. Okay, um, there are two, be two benefits I'm going to tell you about, about keeping an aquarium at home, an office or in a school. Um, research shows that um, the, as the fishes fly, the show this would make it makes you feel relaxed, reduces high blood pressure and heart rate. heart rate, and then it also makes you understand how the water ecosystem works. Now, in this uh, tank, this glass tank, you see this black filter. This filter is a water pump. Is a air pump. Sorry, it pumps air through this tube into the fishes. These fishes over here need air to breathe and they can get some of a few of it through the air, through the water, but it is not enough. As you can see, the most aquariums and in the ocean, they have, um, they have aquatic plants to carry out photosynthesis to, and to help them to breathe. But here, we don't have that. So that's why we are using a pump, which you can get at a hardware store. These fishes are real. We went to turn off the oxygen pump. Now see the fishes swim over to the bottom. This they are trying to conserve energy because fishes can live for 20 hours without the pump or aquatic plants or producing oxygen. So when it's on, you now start moving around. But as for the fake fishes, they move around like this. And when the pump is off, they move around in the same way they move when the pump is on. Okay, for example, there's a bigger fish here. Bigger fishes tend to be stronger, but they also tend to take in a lot of oxygen. So they can't last exactly a full day without oxygen. But these fishes seem little, so they take in less oxygen. So they have a longer lasting period without oxygen. And I am Katabu, and she is... So we are going to talk about the injuries caused to the eye. So the first one here is when a foreigner gets hit. The eye color changes and there's a picture it produces. And then the second one here is when someone hits you from the back of your head. Your eye becomes blunt. So this is a picture of it. Yeah. And the third one here is when someone tries to use a foreign material into your eye, that, such as a pen or a stick into your eye. And there's a picture it produces. The third one here, this happens normally after you wake up. You realize that there's, there are some discharges in between your eyes. So this is how it looks like. And the third one here is when the person does not have a clear vision. This is the picture of it. It is a people. Another one, this black is people. Another one is cornea. This is a traffic. A traffic, yeah. This when your eyes is fouled or they didn't see something, is action or something. This is black. This black is people. This cornea and all all the eyes. Normal science fair, or this year we call it Science and Makers Fair. We, we organize it annually in order to let the students put what they have learned theoretically into practical use. So the student will be able to see what they are learning in their laboratories 
like physics, chemistry, and biology lab, to, for them to see it practically, and also in a real life, how we use it. So, and also it let them think innovative, because those students, they bring the theory themselves, and now put it into practical use. So it's not the teachers, we are putting the uh, project for them. They are thinking, okay, by looking at our atmosphere or our environment, how they can put practical measures to solve those problems. The, after the events, normally when you look at the projects, they are long-term projects, okay? So somehow they are still in progress, okay? So we are still working on them. For example, next year, you may come and see the same project, but in another application or a different way. So there are projects, for example, some of them they work on, uh, let's say, they work on natural cellulose. That is a rocket fuel, okay, fuels. So this rocket falls. This year they are not able to, uh, to to design the rockets. So next year they are going to design the rocket and try to shoot it. So they are in progress. Many of the projects. So they are just so it's not limited to only this year. What we do is that it's not only we don't want only the the people who hear it here. Just be the number the, the number of people that they, they are not our targets. Okay, our target is to reach the the public. You understand? So. For example, Galifse issue, our, we want to make it uh, aware to the public that the negative effect of it to the society, to understand. So that is our work. First of all, we start our work in a laboratory, then we bring it to the school compound, then after that to the general public. I'm Seda Takton. I'm one of physics teacher here. So um, for physics, we have uh, from year seven to A2 level uh, grades, and then we have SS one, two, three, right? So let's say currently I teach year 11, uh, AS level and A A2 level. Purpose is um, to let students um, to participate in touching science. So to perform some experiments, right? And to know their, uh, let's say, hidden abilities, talents, right? Because um, when you give a chance, a student as a um, chance of working a project, so then you figure out, oh, like, maybe academically he's not perfect, he or she is not perfect, but then when he's working on a project, then you figure out a, a talent. Uh -huh. And also uh, to emphasize them, to, uh, to, to let them understand or figure out that uh, they can also create something. They can build things up. Uh -huh. They can also produce something. We, we have attempted competitions in uh, Uganda, in Kenya, and in US. So in Kenya, we got two uh, silver medals. In Uganda, two uh, gold medals. In US, uh, Genius Science Olympiad, also two gold medals. Our next uh, target, let's say, uh, is having a maker fair. That's why it's Science and Maker Fair, right? Uh -huh. So we bought some stuff already and we're going to buy some others, right? Uh -huh. So we have, we have a, a maker lab. Instead of Physics Chemistry by the lab, right? It's called also Maker Space. Uh -huh. So then we take our students through there and we let them work on machines uh -huh. to cut it, to drill it, to weld it. So also to produce some new things. Um, it was good, firstly, right? We could prepare ourselves. Uh -huh. And then, um, I hope you have seen it. Um, so we see that students could uh, put their effort uh -huh, and then uh, took their responsibilities. Expedition uh, for our 16th will be, uh, so um, bigger projects, complicated one. And also, you see, at since, so we have students only from Galaxy. So now, next one, we would like to invite um, students from other schools to challenge each other, to see who can product a better one, or can uh, you know, work on a, a big project, like a more complicated one. Uh -huh. So then we also we challenge other schools, not only Galaxy students challenge each other. I'm Mehmet Yeuzar Balji. I won the Galaxy International School 2019 photo contest. They wanted us to take a picture of ourselves during uh, are doing, doing activities whilst we're playing football or whilst we're eating and they wanted us to send it to them and they told us that they would share it on Instagram and the person who gets more likes and comments wins the competition. I got more than uh, 4,000 likes. I got uh, 5,000 likes. They told us that the first person gets 500 CDs and the second place gets 300 CDs. Yeah, I received the certificate and 500 CDs. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was surprised, but like I don't know what to use it for. Maybe I can give it to my dad. <laughs>
Next year, I think they will do the same competition, and I'm sure there will be more uh, there will be more opponents because everyone wants to get 500 CDs. <laughs> everyone likes money, to be honest. Yeah.